Hi, my name is Cullum Duffy, and I'm an EPA fellow at the University of Limerick and formerly the postdoctoral researcher on the Sequester project. And this is my presentation on randomized land management scenario modeling with Goblin. We'll start off by looking at the Goblin modeling framework, and then we'll examine the net zero scenarios that we produced with it um, before uh, going on to look at some current developments with the model. So Goblin stands for General Overview for a Backcasting Approach to Livestock Intensification. Uh, we classify that as an integrated land use emission model for Ireland that enables us to chart uh, net zero pathways utilizing a backcasting approach. The model links the main AFLU GHG emissions and randomly varies key input parameters to identify combinations of land uses that are compatible with net zero. It took about two years to develop and it was engineered primarily by myself and on the left here and Remy Prudhomme on the right. The model is completely open source and is available for download on Zenodu. We published the uh, version one of the model in the Journal of Geoscientific Model Development. Uh, in terms of uh, overview and scope, uh, the first version of the model is confined to the AFALU boundary. Uh, for the production of our first set of uh, scenarios. We did include harvest of wood products and we're currently attempting to expand the boundaries even further. In terms of structure and data flow then, I'll walk you through that. Our uh, modules here are represented as brown rectangles while the data repositories are the green rectangles. Our processes then are the purple circles. We start off by generating our scenarios and randomly varying our key input parameters. The herd module then uh, generates the national herd for sheep, dairy, and beef for each one of the scenarios, and we produce grassland area and spared area in the grassland module, utilizing the energy requirements for the national herd and inorganic and organic fertilizer inputs. The spared area is divvied out among the alternative land uses, and emissions and removals are uh, calculated using the livestock, forest, and land use modules. The final outputs then are generated using the Goblin module. So our first tranche of scenarios was published recently in Nature Sustainability. For that paper, we generated 850, 850 unique scenarios um, and assessed neutrality to 2050 utilizing the GWP100 metric. GWP100 is the 100-year time horizon global warming potentials relative to CO2 for various greenhouse gases. The scenarios then uh, were classified as, 666 were classified as failing to meet neutrality, which we defined as exceeding 2.5 megatons of CO2 equivalent. 146 then were classified as being AFALU neutral, which we defined as being between 2.5 and negative 2.5 megatons of CO2 equivalent. 38 then were classified as being nationally neutral or contributing to national level neutrality, which we defined as exceeding negative 2.5 megatons of CO2 equivalent. Here we have the between group significance of some of the key parameters in the um, model. The uh, most significant of these variables was the, it was the reduction in dairy and beef population and spared area, forest and wetland area. This slide represents the average agricultural emission decrease relative to the 2015 baseline for the various scenario groups. For the AFALU and national group, we can see that there is a 40 to 50% uh, emissions reduction. And this is based on current or modestly improved productivity per animal without the inclusion of future abatement options. On the same vein here, we have the emissions and removals for land uses relative to the uh, 2015 baseline. Uh, the uh, grassland represents an emission reduction relative to, the, uh, relative to 2015, while uh, the forest land use represents an increase in uh, sequestration. There's a greater area for potential sequestration in forested land, making forestry a key alternative land use. Here we have the forest, average forest and harvest wood product removals to 2120 and the aggregated CO2E uh, emissions and removals to 2050. The orange layer uh, represents forest only, while the blue layer represents uh, forest and harvest wood products. We stopped the land use, uh, the land area inputs for afforestation at 2050. And as you can see, without additional afforestation area, the forestry becomes a net source around 2075. However, this is 
uh, mitigated somewhat by uh, the inclusion of harvest wood products. Uh, now we'll look at land, uses, land use change and the impacts on uh, livestock outputs. Here we have the scenarios represent the minimum and maximum values for milk and beef output for the Afalu group uh, relative to the 2015 baseline. In terms of land uses, we have total grassland area, wetland area, forested area, and farmable condition. Farmable condition is defined as the removal of animals from the land without the implementation of an alternative land use. Uh, so we can see from the slides here that the lower levels of farmable condition results in higher levels of output. Uh, meaning that higher rates of implementation of offsetting land uses reduces the need for destocking. For example, we can see that there's uh, 90, in this uh, scenario, 95% of production is maintained. However, there is a cost to, uh, to dairy production. Uh, in terms of assessing sustainability then, we moved the target year out to 2100, and after we did that, eight of the 146 uh, scenarios in the AFLU group remain neutral, while 32 of the 38 uh, in the national group remain neutral. However, only one scenario maintained the national neutrality status, meaning that the other 31 were relegated to the AFLU group. So some summary messages from our scenarios. Achieving uh, neutrality by 2050 is going to be very ch challenging, but it's going to be even more difficult to maintain that neutrality. Without mitigation and under the current accounting rules for methane, the average reduction for dairy and beef was 42 and 39% for the AFALU group and 52 and 44% for the national group. Mitigation will moderate the level of herd reduction required. However, some destocking will be necessary. If spared area is, to actively, is actively used for offsetting, it is possible to maintain at least 95% of dairy production. Uh, forest cover, as we have seen, is a key alternative land use. To meet the, our targets by 2050, afforestation needs to begin now. Separate methane targets uh, alongside mitigation will likely moderate the reductions required. For more on separate methane targets and defining uh, national climate neutrality, please see the George Bishop presentation. In terms of uh, ongoing development of the model, the Airflux project aims to uh, identify appropriate mitigation options at the catchment level. We're utilizing the Goblin modeling framework for that and uh, attempting to expand the portfolio of alternative land uses that we are modeling within the uh, framework. Uh, we are aiming to uh, look at net zero pathways, but also include water and air quality objectives as well. In terms of fostering partnerships and innovation, uh, we're attempting to collaborate with the Joint Research Council in terms of uh, land use and crop system classification using remote sensing data. And we're also working with Natural Resources Canada to include their spatially specific peatland and forested land tools. Um, so this has been my presentation. I'd like to thank you all for listening.